Welcome to the Hand in Hand Parent Club podcast. I'm Emily Murray, a Hand in Hand instructor and a mom of two. I'm Kathy Gordon, a single adoptive mom of a now young adult son, a Hand in Hand instructor, and we're both moderators of Hand in Hand's awesome membership program, The Parent Club. Every week we'll be answering a parenting question. You'll hear about Hand in Hand Parenting's powerful, respectful parenting tools. We'll share how they help you work with your child's feelings, especially when their behavior gets hard or confusing. You can feel good about using these tools. They've brought warmth and connection to our own families and to many thousands of families around the world who are using the hand-in-hand approach. That's why Hand in Hand and the Parent Club exist. We're here to support you and your family so you have more good, sweet, fun times together. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So our question this week is, what am I supposed to do with all this bad behavior? How am I supposed to react when they're just behaving badly? Well, we thought we would talk about this from the hand-in-hand perspective. At hand-in-hand, we see behavior as a symptom or a signal. And we, we want to look deeper underneath that behavior. I mean, what are they trying to tell me? What are they trying to show me about what they need? What are they trying to communicate? So uh, what they need could be any number of things. Um, and it it's really something that you as a parent just have to kind of sense your way through sometimes. Um, the article that we'll share along with today's podcast um, talks about a few areas that we can look, that we can kind of investigate and dig a little bit into. Um, and I kind of see them almost as like, this is an assumption I can make. If I see bad behavior, I can assume it's actually one of these other things that's going on. And that can reframe and change the way I respond. So wondering to yourself, do they need connection? Has it been a while since they've had kind of a juicy interaction with you where they they feel that connection? Um, sometimes they just need more information or maybe some patience if, if this is a developing skill. Um, Sometimes as parents, we can get a little bit like, oh, they're this old, they should be able to by now. Um, And sometimes there's just some uneven development where even something they could do last week, they just kind of get stuck on it this week. So maybe just some patience as they're developing that skill. Um, It's possible they're feeling unhappy with themselves. And sometimes that internal discomfort, that internal hurt, where they're kind of beating themselves up a bit comes out kind of lashing out at us um, as bad behavior because they just don't yet have the words. I mean, really, it's hard for adults sometimes to find the words to express our inner feelings. So they they may just not be able to find the words to tell us, actually, this is really what's going on. Um, and instead, they just kind of lash out at us or yeah. stir in their behavior a bit <laughs> Yeah, we try to help. Yeah. Often there's something that's happened that we as an adult might not um, understand that, you know, oh, that was hard. And so then, you know, we go bipping along in life and it's bedtime and suddenly they're digging in their heels and refusing to go to bed or having a huge tantrum. And we're like, what's the deal? Like, you know, this is the, this is the routine, you know, we do baths and, teeth brushing, and then we have a big old pillow fight, and then it's lights out. And that happened with my son, I think when he was around six, it was actually the evening of his birthday party. He'd, he'd had, we'd had what I thought was a great birthday party, you know, about five or six other boys come had, had come over, and they'd done all this running around and chasing in the backyard. Um, but if once I, I, you know, I've thought to myself, this is more than bedtime because bedtime usually goes pretty well for us where we have, as I said, like we have this big old pillow fight and then it's time for lights out. And often my son then just, you know, maybe he crawls in my lap and tells me about the day or, you know, kind of drifts off to sleep while I sit there for a minute. And this night he just was not having any of it. It would, this, he was just refusing to go to bed and crying. And it took about maybe about 20, 30 minutes of me listening to him, just, you know, just listening and saying, yeah, just kind of repeating yeah, it's time to go to bed, sweetie. And until it finally came out, like, you know, 
They, they wrecked my birthday party. And I was like, what? And then I realized he had wanted to make music. He had wanted to, you know, like he had all these musical instruments and we had a karaoke machine and he wanted to make music. That was his plan for the birthday party. The boys didn't, you know, they were more interested in just playing chase games out in the backyard. And but because he didn't get to do what he wanted to do, um, what he had planned to do, you know, he was disappointed. And so the feelings were coming out around bedtime because at five, you know, it, you, you, you can't just maybe process that, you know, even adults, you know, if, if you don't, if your birthday is a disappointment, you're, you're going to have feelings about it. So um, that was a really good example for me of like, when I'm trying to get him to do something and he's refusing, maybe it's not that exact thing that is really what's bothering him. And what is he trying to communicate to me? And because I listened for like 20 minutes, um, it finally came out and I couldn't fix it. All I could do was listen. But once I had listened for about another 10 minutes, then he was finally, you know, he'd gotten all of his feelings out and he was actually ready, you know, would easily go to bed. Mm. You know, it reminds me of, um, a, a story an instructor recently told about um, a similar situation with her daughter where, um, you know, the, the walk up to bedtime was getting a little bumpy and there was supposed to be a shower before bed. And there just came this um, head to head point of her daughter just had to bring her tablet, her iPad tablet into the shower with her so she could continue listening to her audiobook. Um, outside of the shower was no good. It had to come in the shower. And of course, you know, what, what parent is going to <laughs> say yes to an expensive iPad going in the shower with their child. Um, so this, this um, limit setting um, set up that the, the instructor said, no, I'm going to hold your iPad out here. And so the child did get in the shower, but with big tears and big anger, and you're the worst mom ever, and I hate you so much, and how dare you, all of the things they could think to throw at their parent in that moment, showing how angry they were. And so eventually the sh enough of the shower happened that it ended, and still tears were coming out. And so um, this, this mom just kind of moved it along into bedtime, and kind of, you know, moved it to, to book reading time. And then that's where, so a juicy connection started. And that's where the real story started coming out, which was she was feeling really stressed about some friend relationships that were not going well at school. Mm -hmm. And she was feeling nervous and upset and um, unsure of herself in those friendships. Um, so it just is such a great example of how when we can um, set a limit and stay listen and stay with the listening, the real story can sometimes come out. Sometimes we hear about it, but sometimes it just resolves because they've had a chance to sob about something. They've had a chance to grieve about something or just let off some tension. Um, and so it's an example of how, when we look at this bigger picture of where is this behavior coming from, Sometimes it's something that happened that day, like in these two stories, um, but sometimes it's it's something that's tied to, um, you know, a transition that's particularly rough. Um, we hear stories from families who, you know, when they're shifting back and forth between parents' houses, oftentimes that first day at the new house or the last day um, at, the, at the old house can be really dicey with behavior because there's some discomfort around the transition of leaving one house and going back to another. Um, you know, toddler parents talk about, it's so hard sometimes to just get toddlers to move out the door. Um, so uh, when, oh, and of course, dinner time, that's a classic one as well, where, you know, we, we're just sitting down to dinner, we've just spent the last half hour making dinner, and all of a sudden, everyone is, is off track and not sitting in their seats and not eating the dinner we just lovingly prepared for them. So these are examples of um, repetitive kinds of behavior or behaviors popping up at repetitive times where we might be able to look at that bigger context and see, oh, 
it's not that they don't want to eat the dinner that I made for them. It's that they've just had a long day and they've just had a big chunk of disconnection from me. And so of course, by the time we're sitting down to dinner, they've just had it, they're done. Um, and so we can re configure the way we work with them. Um, we might just shift timing a little bit. We might insert a little connection here, a little stay listening there, a little playfulness here, um, a little snuggle there. These are the kinds of ways that we can use the hand in hand parenting tools with these, these bad behaviors. Um, and when we use connection um, with these behaviors, we're really getting to that underlying cause, which is, I just actually missed you, mom. And now it's dinner time and I don't feel like sitting in my chair. What they really need is the, oh, juicy connection again. Yeah. Yes. Yep. So uh, what we'd like to leave you with this week is one small thing. Um, we'd like to encourage you to be a detective and notice if there are patterns um, it, you know, see if you can look like what's underneath the upset. And the truth of the matter is, is that sometimes you might not know, but even just your willingness to, um, embrace the, the idea that, that it, it's something other than, uh, the iPad in taking the iPad <laughs> into the shower or something other than refusing to go to, to sleep or something other than, you know, refusing to eat the meal the, that you've just prepared. Um, that can help you kind of take a step back and maybe, you know, hold a little space and listen or, or decide on a little bit of connection. But this week, one small thing, be a detective. Notice if you see any patterns. Notice if you know, there's particular times of the day where things get tough and um, what might be going on around that time of day. So hopefully we'll see you next week too. Um, next week, we're going to talk about more about these kind of annoying, repetitive behaviors and how we can um, use the listening tools to kind of break up those, those patterns. So spend your time trying to find the patterns. And next week, we'll talk about how to interrupt the patterns. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Hand in Hand Parent Club podcast. Please like and subscribe to hear more. And to connect with us between these episodes, come on over to handinhandparenting.org to join the Parent Club, where you can get coaching, classes, and live support. Come join our vibrant community of parents in the Parent Club who are committed to getting the support they need to be the parents they want to become. We'd be honored to support you too. This podcast and the Parent Club are part of Hand in Hand Parenting, a nonprofit organization that supports parents all over the world. We are here for you when parenting gets hard.